Hello everyone. I am so happy to see you again. Many of you have asked me to discuss my kitchen gear. Since I am a lifestyle vlogger as well as the author of a cookbook, I probably have more kitchen gadgets than most people do. Today, I want to discuss only the tools that I love and that I use every day. They are the tools that make cooking fun. Let's start with knives. A quality knife is essential for cooking. When I was young and foolish, I used to buy inexpensive knives. Can you guess what happened? The knives could not be sharpened properly, they bent easily, and some of them even broke off at the handle. What a waste of money. Today, I only have really good quality knives. Now, these knives are made by Wusthof. Wusthof is known as the aristocrat of knives. So they are expensive, but they do last a lifetime. If you can only afford one good knife, a chef's knife like this one is what you want. Now, I do have a lot of knives, and I will show you each one. So this is a serrated bread knife, a long chef's knife, a slicing knife, another long chef's knife. This is a boning knife, which is a great tool to have if you need to debone a chicken or a turkey, a smaller six inch chef's knife, and a paring knife. Now, ceramic knives are great. They cost a fraction of the price of a Wusthof knife, but if you drop one on a hard surface or if you drop one on the floor, I can assure you, based on my own experience, that they will crack and then you have to replace them. So my advice is to go with a high-end knife. Now, it's important to keep your knives sharp, so you really do need a good knife sharpener. I've bought many knife sharpeners over the years, most of them low-end and, frankly, garbage. This is my favorite. It's from Broad and Taylor. I bought this on Amazon, and it works a charm. You've seen me use this in other videos. It's great for sharpening, honing, and polishing knives. And again, it really works. Another essential item is good quality kitchen shears. I use these for snipping chives and also for spatchcocking chickens and turkeys. A cutting board is absolutely essential. I use plastic dishwasher safe cutting boards to cut raw meat, and I use a wood cutting board for everything else. I have bought inexpensive wooden boards over the years. They all cracked or they split in two. This is a butcher block cutting board that my friend Dan Fennel made. It is super high quality, and I also love the dark color because it's great for staging food. It's great for charcuterie as well as for just everyday chopping. This is similar to the hideously expensive booze boards that you probably already know about. And I can put Dan's contact information in the description below. I know some of you have bought your own custom-made boards for him. He does boards for far less than what you would pay for a booze board. The only caveat with a wooden board is that you need to keep it oiled so that the wood doesn't dry out and crack. And for this, Dan recommends this walrus oil. This is inexpensive. You can buy it on Amazon. I use it. It works a charm. Cookie scoops of varying sizes are also essential. I use them obviously for cookie dough, but they are also great for measuring out uniform sizes of meatballs and even cupcakes. 
I bought this set of three on Amazon, not expensive, and I will link them in the description below. There are two eras of cooking, before the food processor and after the food processor. Now, I use my food processor almost every day. I use it for chopping, for slicing, for making pestos, and maybe most importantly, for making pastry dough. If you are pie crust challenged, trust me, a food processor will be a game changer for you. When my very expensive Cuisinart Elite food processor broke, I said, that's it. I'm going to buy an inexpensive food processor. So I bought this $29.99 Black & Decker model, and it works perfectly well for pie crust but it does not do a great job of mincing or slicing or shredding. This 14 cup Cuisinart does everything and it does it perfectly. Shredding, slicing, mixing, you name it. So if you can only afford a small food processor, I suggest the Black & Decker. If you can spend a little more money. Actually, it's quite a bit more money. I would go with the 14 cup Cuisinart. It has great reviews. Let's talk about skillets. When I was a young cook, I would buy the cheapest skillets available. Of course, they warped on the bottom and I had to throw some of them out after only three months of use. And for all the money I spent, I could have bought something quality, like Allclad. Now these are intended to last a lifetime. Allclad is made of thick stainless steel. So I have two Allclad skillets, both of them 12 inches in diameter. This one is for shallow frying or sautéing. This is a deeper 12 inch skillet intended for deeper frying, and of course you can also use it to saute things. I also use this for hamburgers and whatnot. Stainless steel cleans up perfectly. All you need is this stuff, Barkeeper's Friend. As far as non-stick pan goes, I only own one, and I use it exclusively for scrambled eggs and for making crepes. I use a Dutch oven almost every day, and my favorite Dutch ovens are those made by Le Creuset. These are made of enameled cast iron, and they are intended to last a lifetime. I have had mine for decades. I have a seven quart, a five quart, a two quart, and I have another Dutch oven behind me that I will show you in a moment. But I use Dutch ovens for soups and stews and for making crusty loaves of bread, which you have seen me do in many videos. Now, Le Creuset is pricey, but again, it's intended to last a lifetime. This is a large five-quart Dutch oven. It's about half the price of Le Creuset, except it has two faults. First, the enamel is, it's a cheaper kind of enamel, okay? So it scratches very easily. Also, I don't like the shape of the bottom. It has this rounded part, so the only real cooking surface is this narrow area right here, whereas Le Creuset, the cooking surface is the entire bottom because the bottom is perfectly flat. It's not curved. This is a Le Creuset brazier. Now, brazing simply means that you are cooking usually meat in liquid, in a shallow amount of liquid. So this is a very heavy brazier. Again, perfectly flat on the bottom. And as with all of these Dutch ovens, they can go from stovetop to oven. This is a Le Creuset soup pot. It's 
four quarts, but you could also make soup just as easily in a regular Dutch oven. I did not feel like a grown-up until I bit the bullet and invested in a KitchenAid stand mixer. I used this bad boy for whipping cream, for whipping egg whites, for making cookie dough, and sometimes for kneading bread. A KitchenAid mixer is an investment, but with minimal care, it will last for decades. Many of you have asked about the toaster oven that I have over here in the corner. Now, I looked for years for a toaster oven that did not have a lot of bells and whistles and digital settings that could break. And I found this Cuisinart toaster oven. It works perfectly well for my needs. I use it for making toast, for reheating pizza, and for small baking jobs when I don't wish to turn on my big wall ovens. And if you are in the market for a simple toaster oven, by which I mean one that does not have a lot of digital settings, I can link this one in the description below. And speaking of wall ovens, many of you have asked me what brand they are. The wall ovens are made by General Electric. They are electric ovens and I do love them. They work perfectly well. I also use the cleaning cycle on them and I've had no issues with the cleaning cycle. I have a whole video on how to clean an oven if you'd like to watch. I can link that in the description too. Another workhorse in my kitchen is this 16 inch electric skillet. I love it because I can control the temperature. It is perfect for browning large quantities of meat, such as you would want for a beef stew. It's also great for pancakes. I can fit six at a time on this large surface. And I also absolutely love it for my homemade English muffins, which some of you have told me are actually crumpets. After so many viewers told me that I needed an Instant Pot, I finally broke down and bought one. It is a game changer. Unlike the pressure cookers of my mother's era, these require no babysitting whatsoever. They're very intuitive to use. And I love the Instant Pot for pot roast. I mean, the meat comes out absolutely tender in really only a short time. A lot of people use the Instant Pot for making rice and even for making cheesecake. I haven't used it for rice or cheesecake yet, but I will someday soon. This is also great for making stock. You saw me make vegetable stock in this Instant Pot not too long ago. And I love a high-powered blender such as this Vitamix. I use this primarily to puree soups, which you've seen me do many times, but I've also used it to make my own confectioner sugar out of regular granulated sugar. I've used it for smoothies and for many other things that I can't think of right now. But you've seen me use this in so many videos. So I would say that a high power blender is a kitchen essential. Of course, everyone needs a saucepan. I use mine for making rice, for making oatmeal, and obviously for making sauces. Now, All Clad makes a great saucepan, but it's very expensive. I have this inexpensive stainless steel saucepan. It's three quart. I've had it for years comes with this lid and I have this two and a half quart copper saucepan also works great very expensive and I only have it because it was a gift from my spouse and here are four little inexpensive items that I would be lost without this is a bench scraper I use it for lifting yeast dough when I'm kneading it I use it for scooping up chopped vegetables and whatnot so that I can transfer the goods to another container. 
and this is a microplane zester. I use it for zesting lemons and limes and for grating nutmeg. You can even use it to puree garlic. A Y peeler. It has this broad surface that makes peeling potatoes and other things very easy work. And a lemon and lime juicer. You cut the lemon or lime in half, put it cut side down, and it squeezes out all of the juice. And here are some other kitchen essentials that are not expensive at all. Good whisks. This is called a balloon whisk. I have a couple of these and I have a smaller whisk and I have a silicone whisk with this little ball thing in it for special mixing jobs. And I have these wonderful mixing forks, which you have seen me use. These are great when you make coleslaw and you want to lift up the ingredients to mix them. These work a charm. I also use these sometimes to mash butter into flour when I'm making scones or homemade biscuits. I will admit that my list of kitchen essentials is far from exhaustive. I simply wanted to show you the equipment that I love and that I use every day. If you are looking for a gift for someone who is just starting to cook, or if you are looking to amp up your own supply of kitchen essentials, then I hope this video was useful to you. We are having a snow day today, so a little later this afternoon, I plan to film a video in which we cook, bake, and clean something. So be sure to subscribe and to tap the little bell icon to receive notifications so that you won't miss that episode. I will put a couple of my other videos up here and up here that you can watch between now and my next upload. Until then, please treat yourself well, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye, friends.